What's up guys, so today we're going to be having a look at this variable power supply or a lab power supply that I was actually sent for review um, from banggood.com a website that's uh, basically all kinds of electronics and stuff like that goods that uh, sent me this one out for, to have a play with um, up to 30 volts and 10 amps, it'll actually get up to 32 volts um, which is awesome. This one is actually a switch mode power supply, so it's really light, nice ventilation, cooling fan, just a uh, standard old computer IEC plug. But they provide the uh, they provided a cord, which. Uh, in this case they provided one which was actually had an Australian plug on it because they sent it to me and they also provided a travel adapter in the packaging just in case so let's turn it on and have a look okay so it's very similar in operation to the other one I had which is which was a transformer one, the cheap rubbish one that died but um, this one you get your two knobs which give you either current limiting or voltage limiting so we'll keep the current down just to, just on and we'll get 12 volts dialed up there's 12 yeah, it didn't come with these this alligator clip leads it it just comes as a bare unit I suppose not everyone's going to use alligator clips like I do for my projects some people use different things okay so it's voltage regulation even though it's uh, in point 0.1 increments over here is awesome You can roll up high. So that full voltage is within point 0.2, oh, less than point 0.2. How low does it go down to? It actually goes down to its off. So pretty good, like we're not going to go and uh, be doing anything crazy with it, like trying to run super sensitive equipment. So, there's a bit of a test. I have a 12 volt 30 watt trade flame soldering iron, a little 12 volt one. Let's just hook that up and have a look. If the connection in the end of that wants to play the game. It doesn't look like it will. It might be pushed into a cigar lighter socket, you see. Right, don't worry about the uh, soldering on. We have this 24 volt 70 watt work light. We're going to wind the current to uh, full open in this case. The 12 volts, happily pushing out the uh, 1.7 amps there. So let's uh, get her up to 24 volts where it's meant to be. Not really a 70 watt, 70 watt globe, then is it? Two and a half times 24 is not 70. Anyway, it's quite happily running that. 
no fan or anything yet, no horrible transformery noises. And uh, this is probably good to know for some of you people that are doing off-grid stuff. That's actually currently running off my power inverter. So there's a tiny little bit of frequency noise coming through from the power inverter, but that's the power inverter's fault, not, not, the, not the power supplies. A bit over 90 watts of power running through that now. Uh, that fan you can hear is the um, inverter over the other side in the power shed. Alright, let's see if we can't load it up to 10 amps and see what happens. It's either going to work or it's going to fail. And what we're going to do is go for 9.5 volts, like so. And we're going to put that on one of these big lead acid batteries back here. Okay, so here we go. It's currently punching out 9 volts at 10 amps, so back up around the 90 watt mark again. And it's making my power inverter over there do a bit, but this thing's Yet to kick a fan in or, or break a sweat. Ah, fan started. Wonder if it's just a single speed one. So that's punched out a considerable amount of power into this battery here. So the link to this product is going to be in the uh, description of the video. So far, the fan's back off again. There you go, that's pretty cool. Which is good if you're trying to do stuff and you don't want to be listening to the fan all day. So that's seriously punching out a bit of juice there. Fan kick back in. There's no temperature you can feel on the outside. So once again guys, full disclosure, I got sent this for review. I didn't pay for it. And uh, I've got to admit, I'm quite happy with it. See the amperage is dropping off there. Poor little leads are probably starting to struggle. Uh, amperage is dropping off. So once again, if you wanted to just only charge it 5 amps you can just charge it 5 amps and it will current limit until it gets up in voltage limits or you can do it like I did and just have it flat out until it gets up to its voltage limit so it's got constant current and constant voltage charging capabilities links in the description for it guys I think it was about 90 something dollars Australian it's tiny it's lightweight you could quite easily stack a few of them together on your bench and compared to the cost of a professional big one, which probably doesn't put out 10 amps either. Um, yeah, they're, they're definitely a good cheap option. Time will tell and there will be uh, a few more videos about it. I will actually pull it apart and we'll have a look inside. That's uh, what goes on in there and the build quality. But on the outside, the build quality is pretty good. It's got a nice gauge. It's easy, clear to read. Nice and bright like the uh, light in the... Um, video cameras actually lighting that up at the moment it's beautiful and light like I say not generating any temperature and it will run on an inverter so that's a massive win for me because um, it means I can use my off-grid stuff to uh, charge batteries and whatnot and uh, recover cordless tool batteries and charge oh, I can charge a bulk lot of 18650s with 10 amps it's, it's gonna be good so uh, thanks for watching, um, if you liked the video give us a thumbs up, it means a lot guys, if you've got any questions about it or things you think I should do to it to test it, that's going to be the big thing, let's, let's really test it out because uh, it's a rare opportunity to test the life out of something, um, 
on camera for you guys before you decide to buy one. So thanks heaps for watching. Catch us on the next video. Thanks for subscribing. Cheers.